Components are a crucial part of building a design system. Not only do they create consistency and improve the scalability of your digital product, but they also make the design and the development process much more efficient. Components can be used as reusable building blocks, which means less time is spent designing and building the same component over and over again, and there's less chance of inconsistencies across various parts of your digital product. In this video, we're going to explore how components fit into the broader context of a design system, we're going to build our first component in Figma. We'll then check it for accessibility, create various states for that component, and then animate the component using the prototyping tools in Figma. We'll then finish off by looking at how we can use the skills in this video and apply it to a different type of component. First, let's talk about what a design system is. I think the best way to start this is from a quote from Mark Boy Smith who said this during a design system talk at the Design at Build It conference. A design system offers us a shared language that connects all the people in our product development ecosystem and gives them the tools to work with each other and work with our users. Let's quickly break that down. Components are the individual elements that make up the user interface, which can consist of buttons, icons, text fields, tables, and navigation menus. These components are one of the main building blocks of a wider design system, which is a set of rules and guidelines that designers, developers, marketers, and stakeholders can follow. This is the shared language that Mark mentioned. Figma explained this quite well. They said that components are the what, and the design system states the how and the why. Creating components in a wider design system creates this shared language and allows for a more effective development process. Let's take a look at how we can create our first component. For this video, we'll start off by designing the button. This will be our primary button for a web application. So we're going to start off by pressing the letter T on the keyboard and that'll create a new text layer. And we're just going to type the word button. Next, we're going to have Shift A to add auto layout. Now, what that's going to do is, is it's going to allow the button to resize its content depending on the size or length of the text within it. If you want to learn more about Auto Layout and any of Figma's new features, watch our responsive design video which will be linked just above and it will also be linked in the video description. That video covers minimum and maximum widths, um, but for now we're just going to apply a minimum width and we're not going to go into too much detail about it in this video. So I'm going to start off by just selecting this button, going over to the width here and adding a minimum width. In this example, I'm going to set it to 200 pixels. That's the minimum size we want the button to go across any other web application. Next, we're just going to make sure that our button is center aligned and in the frame that it's created from auto layout, just make sure that it's in the center there. So no matter what, our button will always be a minimum of 200 pixels. Next, we're going to make the text color white and we're going to which it already is, and we're gonna set it to fill to a blue color. Let's pick this nice uh, looking blue here. Before we move any further forward, we wanna make sure that our button is gonna pass on accessibility. So to do this, we want to make sure that our text size is a minimum of 16 pixels. In this case, it's 30, this is way too big for what we need. So I'm just gonna set this to 18 for us. Next, I'm gonna use a plugin which you go up here in the top bar called contrast. And it's this one here with a little gradient, yellow and green gradient. If you select on that, make sure you've got this frame selected before you do that. I'm just gonna press scan up here and scan selection. And you can see that this is failing on accessibility. If you click into this, you can see it's because the text color is too light for the background. Now we can do this one of two ways. We're gonna either make the text color darker and keep the background as is or we're gonna make the background darker and keep the text color as it is. For this example, we are going to make the background darker. Let's give it this purpley blue tinge. Next, when we try to rescan this, we can see that no issues have been found and it's passing on accessibility. Now we've got our first component, which is a button. We're gonna give it some states. Now, first, I'm gonna add just a little bit of border radius to this. I'm gonna add an eight pixel border radius just around those corners a little bit. 
I'm going to select this and I'm going to go up to the top bar here and press create component. Now what this does is it creates an asset within Figma that no matter where you are within your file, you can reuse this component over and over. So now we've got this. We're just going to give it a more relevant name and we're going to call this primary button. So next we're going to create some states. So states are the various style and properties a component should inherit when the user completes a certain action or when that action isn't available. So this could be the user hovering over the button or clicking on the button or in the scenario where the button might be inactive. So in this example, let's create two different states. We'll create one where the button's on hover and we'll create one where the button's inactive. Having a hover state on your button means that you provide immediate visual feedback to the user whenever they move the cursor over it. It shows that the button is interactive and that helps improve the user experience. So to create this component, we are going to select this one and up here in the top bar, you can select add variant. Now this will create another instance of the button. So we can see we've got two versions of it here. In the property panel on the right hand side, I'm going to call this hover. So for this button, I'm going to select it and in the color panel and the fill, I'm going to press plus and this will automatically add a 20% overlay of a dark color, which is in this case, it's black. And I'm pretty happy with that. It shows enough definition between the first button and the second button there, but I'm also going to add a, a drop shadow. So in this bar at the bottom, just create an add new effect and add a drop shadow. Next, I'm going to set up the inactive button. So what's going to happen here is it's going to have like a resting state. And then when you hover over it, a little tooltip is going to come up to explain that the button is inactive. So I'm going to click on the original button and press the purple plus arrow. I'm going to call this inactive. And I'm going to set the fill to a dark gray color. I'm going to do this as a bluey gray. Next, I'm going to create another instance of that. And I'm going to call this inactive hover and next what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add a little bit of text and I'm going to say um, this is not active now you can add any copy you would want here um, and this is just an example I'm going to make this a regular size font I'm going to press shift a to give it a auto layout container I'm just going to give it eight pixels pattern on the top and the bottom here and long as well as the sides. I'm going to add a fill of white. I'm going to round the corners a little bit. I'm going to add a stroke just to give it that little bit of um, separation between the background, whatever background color we may use. I'm just going to set this as 20%. And I'm going to set the text color as the same dark gray color. Next, I'm going to add a little polygon like this. I'm going to copy it and paste it inside of the frame and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button up here to give it absolute position that means it doesn't inherit the auto layout properties I'm going to center it to the canvas and I'm just going to move it up until it's on the edge there I'm going to give it a fill of white and a stroke of 20% next I'm just going to grab this little tool tip I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it inside of this button here like I did previously, I'm going to give it absolute positioning and I'm just going to move it until the button is center. And then finally, I'm just going to make this little container bigger so we can see everything within it because it's currently clipping all the content. Next, we want to create the interaction between the resting state and the hover state. And this will show the interaction or the animation that happens when the user hovers over the button. And this can be set directly up in Figma using their prototyping feature. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the primary button here and click prototype in the top right panel. I'm going to press plus on this interactions panel and I'm going to change on click to while hovering. Next, I'm going to select this from none to change to. I'm going to change it from the property default, which was the default button to the hover state. And I'm going to change this from instant to smart animate. 300 milliseconds is probably a bit too slow so I'm just going to change this to 200 instead and you get a preview of how that will animate. What we're going to do now is we're going to test this button. So I'm just going to create a little frame to the right hand side and I'm going to go into assets 
And as you can see here, it'll come up as a local component. This is a reusable asset that you can use across your file. I'm gonna drag this in on the page. And I'm just gonna send our alignment. I'm gonna select this frame and I'm gonna press play. Now in Figma's new update, this comes up as a preview window. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see. And you can see when we hover over that button, it changes color. And you've got that visual response that it is interactive. So the same thing will apply for the inactive button. So I'm just gonna select this, hit prototype. And there's two ways of doing this. You can also hit the plus next to the interactions like we did previously, or you can hover over the button and you can see this little blue plus arrow. You grab this and it's a little pull handle and you drag it to which component you want it to animate to. So I'm gonna drag it to this second one. The same thing will apply, and sometimes Figma automatically inherits the previous features that you've just applied. So in this case, we did select Smart Animate, we did select Ease Out, and we did select 200 milliseconds, but we didn't select On Click. So just be wary of that. When you click on this, just change it while hovering, and let's test that again. So I'm just gonna create a new frame, in the assets panel on the left side, drag in the button. I'm just going to center align this and I'm going to change this to our inactive state. I'm just going to hit play. And when the preview window opens, when we hover over that, our little tool tip appears. Let's take a look at a different example, this time with a text field input. We're going to run through the same process as last time as the same principles apply. So here we have a field that I created earlier, and I'm gonna create three additional states for this. We already have the resting state here, and we're gonna create a hover state, a selected state, and an error state. Let's create the hover state. Now I'm gonna go up here and create a component first, as this wasn't, and then this button changes to add variant. I'm gonna select that, and you can see here it creates the component set. I'm just gonna give it a little bit more space here, so you can do this in the right column by adjusting this panel here. Alternatively, you can do it here as well. So I'm gonna give this about 80. I'm gonna change the height of this container just so we can see everything within it. Next, I'm gonna select this text input field here and I'm gonna make the stroke a little bit darker. I'm gonna set this to 40%. And this is gonna be for our hover state. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this first one here and call this resting. And the second one here, I'm gonna call this hover, just so we don't get confused when we go to animate it. Next up, I'm gonna create the selected state. So I'm just gonna hit this purple plus arrow here, and in the right panel, I'm gonna call it select. So this time I'm gonna use the same colors as the button. Now the problem is, is I don't know what those exact colors are. I'm just gonna go into the left panel and select my button page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set these as variables within Figma, so reusable colors. On here, we can see that this is the color code. I'm gonna select that, and I'm gonna press new variable. I'm gonna call this blue. Same with the text color. I'm gonna go up here, select the color, press the plus, and call this light blue, and create variable. When we navigate back over to the text input page, I'm just gonna change the color of this stroke by selecting the style button up here and selecting the blue color that we've defined. Finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow just to show that we've got this component selected. Finally, I'm gonna create an error state. So I'm just gonna click on this one here, press that arrow button again and type error. I'm gonna change this stroke color to a red. Now again, test this for accessibility. I want to reuse that red color, so I'm just gonna create this as a new style and call it red or error. Next, I'm gonna select this text at the bottom because this is the um, required issue. And I'm gonna select error. And that just highlights that, that re-emphasizes this is the issue that you are currently facing and that also helps with the user experience. Finally, we're just gonna prototype this up. So again, click on your first component, hit prototype in the top right panel, press the plus on interactions, change from on click to while hovering. Instead of none, we're gonna change to, and the property instead of resting, we're gonna change it to its hover state. 
we don't want this to be instant we're going to smart animate this and again i'm going to set this as 200 milliseconds what we're going to do now is select the hover state so when the user is hovering over this component when they click it we want them to be able to enter information so we're going to drag this here and on click which is correct and everything else is automatically applied here what we're going to do is to show an example of the error state we're going to also animate this while the mouse leaves so when the mouse leaves the component area we're going to change it to the error state and also just apply the same animation and this will just show an example of what it looks like when you receive an error so i'm going to create a new frame select the text input and drag it in i'm going to center align this and i'm going to hit present while we hover over you can see you get that visual response that it's interactive upon clicking it that field becomes active so you know the user knows that they can interact with that now it's live it's ready to go as an example for the error state we're going to move the mouse out and this is where we receive the error that visual change happens the color changes and that text at the bottom highlights to show there's an issue and explain what it is make that text as clear and as simple as possible explain the error in as fewer letters as possible but don't add any jargon in there don't add error codes make it plain english text or whichever language you're using and make it as simple as possible for the user to understand what issue or error they've made or found that was a very brief look at how components can become part of a much wider design system i've previously worked on projects where we've planned designed and tested over 250 components for a design system. You can view this case study by clicking the link in the description. If you would like to know more about how Komodo can quickly improve the scalability of your digital product, take a look at some of the links in the description or get in touch with our design team at komododigital.co.uk. Thanks for watching. To keep up to date with our new tutorials, guides and updates, make sure you subscribe to our channel and leave a like on this video. Oh, 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 oh,